Hello everyone, so for today's video, I am going to be doing a Q&A you guys recently sent in loads of questions regarding the topic of kind of like revision and school and stress and all that kind of stuff. And I have received so many questions that I'm going to sit here and answer them all for you today. I may have spoken about some of these things in previous videos, but I'm sorry if I repeat myself, but this is kind of like a dedicated Q&A to GCC's revision, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure which channel this go is going up on, so currently I'm filming on my vlog camera. So if you usually watch my main channel and this does go up on my main channel, that may be why the quality is different or the sound's different. I don't think the audio is probably as good on this camera, but yeah, my main channel camera is out of charge right now. Okay, so... This kind of video is going to be part of a series which I'm calling Study with Sophia. Such an original name, I know. This is kind of just going to be all my revision and school related videos. So I was originally going to do this on my vlog channel. However, I realised that there's only 2,500 of you on there and there's nearly 18,000 of you on here. I wasn't really sure how many people would then go to my vlog channel and watch these videos who need them. So I decided I'm going to upload them on my main channel. These videos are going to go up on Wednesdays and then proper how to revise videos will go up on Sundays. Obviously the beauty, the fashion videos, they'll still be coming. This is just like in general when I do upload these videos. So make sure you're subscribed, turn the notification bell on so you know when I am uploading this kind of video. Obviously got some makeup videos, fashion videos, they're still coming within the next few weeks. So I'm just gonna try and do these maybe like two times a month, maybe one time once a month, I don't know. It depends how popular they are. Also, I just wanna say, I'm really sorry if this goes out of focus. I keep looking at the viewfinder just to make sure because this camera seems to have like a tendency of just blurring in and out when I'm not vlogging with it. So the first question is ways to not procrastinate while revising. I think everyone is guilty of doing this. Everyone just doesn't want to do it because it's such a chore and it's such hard work. But I think you just have to kind of remember at the time you're doing it that the hard work's going to pay off. It will be done soon. The quicker you do it, not the quicker, but the sooner you do it, the sooner you will have more free time. I think to kind of avoid it, put away your phone, put away anything you know, that's going to distract you. Even a book, if you're a really keen reader, put away all the books so you're not tempted to pick one up and read. Everyone's guilty of it, but we all just need to try and like persuade ourselves that life will get better. How do you get motivated to revise? I go through phases where I'm all for it and I go through phases where I literally can't be bothered. So the way I've kind of motivated myself now is rewarding. So once I revise, I can film a YouTube video, or once I revise, I can have some ice cream. You know, like, little rewards are really, really helpful. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I've actually made a revision timetable because our mocks start at the end of June, and we've been recommended to already start revising now, as it is two months away, but there is so much content, especially for science, it's two years worth of content, same with maths, two years worth of content. So I've made a revision time tables behind me. Um, if you'd like a video on how I did that, then let me know, but it's not really that difficult. So to motivate me, I have to have that. What apps or websites do you recommend for revision? So I definitely do recommend for science, BBC Bite Size, and also my GCC Science. For maths, it's things like diagnostic questions that are perfect. Other subjects in general, I think BBC Bite Size is a really good place to go to. Um, if your school offers you Caboodle, that's another really good place to go to. But really, I don't tend to use apps as much anymore. I used to always use like the same apps. Now I kind of just use apps such as Quizlet and Duolingo and Vocab Express and things like that for specific revision. That's kind of like self-testing, but I don't really use any apps which provide with information. What are your favorite revision methods? I am a big fan of mind maps. I just find that 
everything is then in front of me and I can remember it. I can actually start to visualize like where things are placed and it's all about color and positioning. So my maps are usually my go-to. I also really like flashcards for things like keywords because it's easy to quickly test yourself and sometimes I won't write them out, I'll just do it on Quizlet because that way I can test myself wherever I am. I also really like post-it notes for subjects where there's a lot more content. Things like history, I love post-it notes for because they're constantly like testing myself like they're all over my room when I have history revision to do and for things like languages I think my favorite methods are just really getting to grips with the speaking and the listening and lots of practice and things for maths and stuff it's a lot of practice papers really how much revision is too much or too little I think too little revision is when there's things you're still not confident with or there's things that you still don't know or understand and I think too much revision is when you can say it off to your heart's content but then you're panicking about it. I think too much revision, you can never do too much but there's a point where you have to stop. You are comfortable with it, you're fine, you're just gonna stress yourself out. If you could go back and choose your options again, would you? I don't think I would. I even struggled to choose my options because I am a very academic person, I guess. I'm not really someone who's into things like drama, music, art. That's never been me. I am much more of like an academic person and so when it came to choose my options I really struggled because I had an idea of what I wanted to do but I had like three in the end I had to decide like I had to cut one of them basically and you know there was time there's times where I think why did I choose history and there's other times where I'm like I'm so glad I didn't I chose history over PE so yeah I wouldn't go back and change anything I just think that I would have just liked to have known a little bit more but I don't think there would have been anything else I would have done how do you find a balance between work and relaxation so as you'll see this is my timetable behind me and a lot of the timetables I found online they go up till like nine o'clock at night and personally I'm not functioning at nine o'clock at night my brain's not my brain wants to just switch off that it would have been going for 12 hours so I tend to do work and this includes homework between 4 and 8 the absolute latest if I've got so much to do that's the very very latest and obviously I will stop somewhere in between for dinner and I'll stop to have little breaks for about a couple of minutes or 5 minutes or so on a Friday on my timetable it says homework homework and then the rest of the evening just nothing like it's not even strong it's not even hard homework it's just like little diagnostic questions vocab express things like that or if i do have a lot of homework obviously you need to do that but i think it's really important to take some time off and just to relax whether that's on the weekend whether that's late in the evenings you know don't be working until silly hours of the morning it's not good for you your brain's not functioning properly either it needs sleep so i think to find that balance you've just got to manage your time really effectively get as much done as possible to the best to the best of your ability and to the best quality it can be and then relax so this question I always find really interesting when people ask this and I'm always interested in knowing what other people's answer to this question is but it's what subject do you have to work harder in to do well and I think a lot of people often say maths however for me it's science I think biology is like fine biology is like a lot of content physics is okay because I'm not bad at maths and physics is about 40% formula in the exam so it's always chemistry for me and I think that's where I just have to work hard I have to really make sure I have an understanding I know how to apply that and it paid off this hard work in my science test that I got back today I was one mark off getting an eight clearly that hard work paid off and it's just really about putting the time in and with science there is so much content that you just have to make sure you're comfortable with it so out of all the subjects that's the one I just put extra hard work in because that's probably my weakest subject so this question will kind of reflect my revision timetable and this is how many subjects do you tend to revise for on a school day and for how long so obviously being in year 10 we're still being set homework it's not like we've got the real exams we've got mocks across the country everyone in year 10 has got mocks whether that's now or that's in june or may or whatever so obviously teachers are still setting homework because they have to get through all the content how i have to manage to get revision in as well as homework is that i'll do an hour of homework then i'll do an hour of revision of one subject 
have my dinner. It probably doesn't all time quite perfectly. After dinner, I'll do another hour of revision for a different subject and then I will go back to homework. But obviously, at this kind of stage, you have to prioritise your homework over your revision just because that has a deadline, whereas revision you can catch up on. And it, at the moment, we don't have a specific deadline. So I think once the homework stops, then it'll be fine but obviously it's not gonna stop just yet and I've noticed you know we've been set loads over Easter but then like nothing now so I think it's gonna lay off for a little while because they know people want to try and start revising which I think is really nice then it will pile back on again about May half term and then they'll try and relax it off just before mocks because they want people to actually revise and do well this question I probably should have said at the start for those of you who don't know but I get asked this all the time what GCSEs are you taking so maths English science RE French history geography media and then I think in year 11 I'm gonna start my further maths which is a one year course it's like an extension on maths based a uh, math GCSE it's like half GCSE, half A level. The final question I'm going to answer is what do you plan on doing after GCSE as this kind of just links on to what I've just said. So obviously I plan on doing A levels, whether I stay at my school and do that or if I go somewhere else that's still unsure. Um, again with the A levels I've got about six things and obviously some schools let you do four and then drop one some schools just let you do three for the two years so it's something you really have to think about um some schools let you do four if you've only got cert if you've got specific grades at GCSC so the kind of things I'm thinking are media um English math psychology sociology and film studies I think they are probably the six I'm most interested in. That is everything I'm going to answer in this video. If you still have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I reply to every single comment. So, of course, I'm going to answer your question to the greatest extent I can. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a massive thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I promise you, if you're someone who doesn't really like watching these kind of videos, there are beauty, fashion random other videos on this channel and if you're someone who loves watching these videos like me um there are plenty more to come and there are really quite a few on this channel um if you haven't already go and subscribe to my vlog channel over there i've been uploading some vlogs recently from my trip to new york and to niagara falls i think there's about three vlogs and two of them already gone up so there should be the niagara falls vlog coming very soon for you i don't know when you're going to see this video see you all in my next video bye